Hi, Gemini, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology. I was just checking my camera. I know I'm, you know, right at the edge here. Let me check. Yeah, right at the edge at the bottom, but you've got everything happening up here. And actually, you know what? Whoa. Let us just uh, do this. There. There. So we can get everybody in. Maybe I'll just move these down a little bit. Okay. The making of January Astrology for Gemini. Gemini, you have Mars in your first house, and I've talked about that before because Mars has been inhabitually a very long time in your sign in your first house um, since oh, I'm oh, going out on a limb here and saying May. It's been Mars will have been in your sign seven months and will move into Cancer in March. So if we go back, yeah, about May, June. And Mars has been retrograde for a few months as well. So, you know, that energy is stuck. Mars is tremendous energy. Mars, I would say, is the motor and whatever you, you know, harness Mars to will go forward. But you've probably felt that stuck energy very much. Things haven't been going forward the way you've wanted. I've, you know, said this is a time to review, revise, not try to go ahead because we're simply just going to be continuously hitting a wall. Now with Mars going direct again on the 12th of January and we'll begin picking up speed as he comes out of that retrograde motion, there's going to be probably, you know, the pace is going to pick up in your life quite a bit. Whatever you want to do, you're going to have a lot of energy with Mars in your first house. And you're also going to be much more assertive and have much more drive. The downside of Mars is, you know, he... The upside is it's a very driven, very intense energy. The downside is Mars is a little bit individualistic and can step on some toes. So, you know, you're going forward with such great strength and great speed that you don't really notice uh, those around you. So just, you know, do be a bit mindful of that. And, um, you know, the other down downside, you know, there's, there's good sides and bad sides to, you know, every sign. But, and you've probably heard me say this before if you watch the other videos, you are, um, you know, you're an air sign. You're very quick of the mind, Gemini. Uh, Geminis love to explore different ideas and concepts. They move quickly from one idea to another. Actually, you know, most people have trouble following them unless they're another Gemini or they have some very strong Gemini placements. If you do that with Mars's energy, you will have Mars going in many directions at once. Remember, Mars is the god of war. He's the soldier. He focuses on a mission and he accomplishes that mission. So harness that energy towards one or two goals and don't scatter Mars's energy because it will be a waste of that. But do know, you know, you will be feeling particularly energetic and particularly assertive. And Mars will move into Cancer at the end of March on the 25th. So, you know, there's a couple more months of using this wonderful energy to go forth with whatever you want to go forth with. Having said that, um, the sun is in Capricorn in your eighth house. Now, the eighth house has everything to do with other people's wealth. So, you know, it can be something like, you know, through your bank manager, you know, a mortgage, a loan. It can be our partner's wealth, uh, a business partner's wealth, um, you know, how, you know, that is divided up. It can be money through wills and, um, you know, testaments. The eighth house, you know, relates to Scorpio and is very much also, you know, the occult has to do with death. So that's where we get the, um, you know, wills, testaments, legacies. Pluto has been there for many, many years, about 18 years in your eighth house. And Pluto is a deep transformational energy. Pluto also relates to power and control and do know that Pluto is the modern ruler of Scorpio and is related to the 8th house. So there's a bit of an at-home feeling for Pluto in the 8th house. Now this long, deep, transformational transit of Pluto through your 8th has probably had you exploring very much, you know, issues of uh, death and rebirth, you know, perhaps maybe even on an occult level. Um, Pluto is, you know, it, it also relates to regeneration as well through this death and rebirth. So this has perhaps become uh, more important to you over the last several years. Of course, you know, when a planet transits through a sign for a long time, this isn't, you know, a constant intense energy on a daily basis. It gets triggered in cycles. But, you know, that probably when you look back, and this is Pluto's last year in your eighth house, when you look back, you will see that you have changed and transformed in relation to these topics. You know, it can almost be 
you know, your philosophy your, or your outlook on things concerning, you know, death and rebirth. And as I said, you know, maybe you have, um, you know, explored the occult a little bit, you know, read up on um, uh, past lives or I actually have a uh, blog on my site about a past life regression I did after hesitating. <laughs> and if you've ever, um, if you want to read up on that, there's a book called Many Lies, Many Masters by Brian Weiss or Weiss. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who is a psychiatrist, very, very interesting about a patient he treated. But that might be something you're, you know, exploring, reading, uh, listening to, um, you know, going online and uh, learning about on an entirely different um, level or aspect. As I said, the eighth house also relates to wealth we have through others. And Pluto is about power and control. So, you know, perhaps you have transformed and grown and um, because you have been forced to explore power and control issues in terms of other people's wealth, how much hold that has over you or how much you want to let it have over you. So, you know, perhaps Pluto's transformative energy has come through a major change to resources you benefit from through someone else. We all can think of a partner's money, but it can also, um, you know, as I said, I was talking about a business partner. There is something there that probably when you look back the past 18 years, you will see how it has transformed your take on death, rebirth. As I said, it could tie into past lives, something to do with the occult or you know, resources and money you benefit from through others. But do know, you know, Pluto is very uh, deep and transformative. And, you know, when we look back on, on its transit, we can see we're not the same person we were when the transit started. But the sun there is bringing focus and Mercury has you thinking a lot about that. As I said, maybe going online and studying about that, maybe talking even to, uh, you know, someone else about that. And I see this as sort of a review of what Pluto has been doing in your eighth house. Remember, as I said, by this time next year, by the 20th of January, 2024, Pluto will move um, into Aquarius for good. So he will leave and never come back until, you know, 230 years later. So obviously Pluto only goes through one sign for each of us in our lifetime and doesn't even move you know we don't experience Pluto through all the signs obviously in our lifetime so that will be that will be the end of that Gemini <laughs> but I think you know you will sort of be reviewing all this this energy is certainly bringing up a review here but it will extend um, you know through the rest of the year as well as you take one last look back and you know define what you think of of these um, or where you position yourself or how you are in relation to these eighth house topics. But moving along, Saturn, Saturn will also change signs in 2023 in March. So wrapping up another three year stint in your ninth house in Aquarius, the ninth house has a lot to do with organized religion, uh, philosophy. It is also medicine, the law, it is higher education, it is long distance travel. Saturn wants us to take responsibility, makes us work very hard, makes us build a structure in these aspects. So if it does relate to higher education, you know, perhaps you have been working very hard for a higher degree. You have been, you know, responsible for advancing that. Perhaps this is also in terms of travel, you know, but travel could be uh, for a learning purpose because remember Saturn wants us uh, to learn and the ninth house does relate to learning. Or, um, you know, perhaps a business pur purpose. It could be long distance travel with sort of an obligation aspect. As I said, also it relates, you know, to philosophy and to organized religions. So perhaps you are structuring your beliefs or structuring your, you know, philosophy of life, so to speak. And Saturn does give us a little uh, reward. It's also um, more so because this is a sort of culmination of what Saturn has been pushing you to do. Because remember, when he moves into your 10th house, you know, this is the midhaven and it is the highest point in our chart. He will be entering into the last quadrant of our chart. So, you know, not only will Saturn reward you with a gift, but if you have, uh, you know, structured this well, if you have... Um, you know, learned through Saturn's transit through your ninth house, you will be rewarded also because he is transiting over your midhaven. Now, having said this, Venus will also be in Aquarius from uh, the 2nd to the 26th in your ninth house. And Venus, of course, is cooperation. Venus, you know, as a very sweet, very diplomatic energy. So, 
you know, again, people will want to cooperate with you, maybe helping you to further ninth house matters. Venus will conjunct Saturn from the 21st to the 26th. So, you know, Venus is also romance. This could be romance with an older person. It could be someone also who is different from you or foreign to you, because remember, we are back to long distance travel, but also travel in the mind, right? The ninth house relates to what is different from us and how we grow by coming into contact with what is different. You know, we always say travel makes us grow. Well, it is also... Um, as I said, you know, travel in the mind and coming into contact with people that are different from us and possibly an older person or, or you might be the older person, um, you know, in the relationship. And it doesn't have to be romantic. It can also be platonic, but it is a nice, um, you know, ending almost uh, as Saturn, you know, leaves your ninth house. You know, maybe someone uh, will benefit. It could be a feminine energy. It could be, you know, uh, another woman. Uh, whether again romantic or platonic and uh, you know just uh, helping you once again cooperating with you to help you further your learning in terms of ninth house matters and of course the sun is going to move there as well on the 21st and bring focus also but you know only for a few days Venus will already be at the end and Venus will move into your 10th house the 10th house is your house of success career success or wherever else you want success and again, Venus, you know, beneficial energy attracts people to us. You, you know, will be the assemb assembler. That's such a bad word. But, you know, in your workplace, you will very likely uh, get people cooperating together or cooperating with you. You will sort of be the, can I say ringleader without that sounding bad? <laughs> But, you know, you will be the, um, you know, initiator and the gatherer. And, you know, I'm going to find a better word, but you know what I mean. You're going to be the people that gets people together in order to do something there. <laughs> that was a long way of saying it, but it makes a lot of sense. So, and if you have to ask for something, you know, from a boss or uh, someone important, someone related to career success, this is a good time to do it. People will get on board with you and want to help you. Now, um, Venus will not be conjunct Neptune until next month, but, you know, we talk about Venus, this romantic energy as well. So this is, you know, perhaps the classic um, uh, romance in the workplace. If your 10th house of success relates to climbing the corporate ladder, there's a dreamy quality. Venus is exalted in Pisces. So there's really a dreamy quality to, to Venus there. You know, Venus wants uh, beauty. Um, you know, we're talking romance again. Um, you know, and, you know, beauty, you're going to say, hey, what beauty in terms of, of career or success? If, you know, your, your success is in a creative pursuit, this is very favor, favored by Venus's transit there because Venus does relate to art, to beauty, to creativity. It can be also, you know, perhaps you just want to have that creative vibe in your workplace. You know, if you do have a job that pertains to anything creative or, you know, anything far or wide, you know, art, um, interior design or anything like that. This is also a favorable transit because we're talking um, success, but, you know, with Venus's vibe for creativity and beauty. Venus also has a, a dreamlike quality there. So, you know, perhaps maybe a need for a reality check, but also a really good time to get um, creative inspiration in order to, you know, further success, especially, as I said, if it is in a creative pursuit. And um, Venus will not conjunct Neptune until next month. But if we're talking romance, any romance with Venus and Pisces and especially conjunct Neptune can have a very dreamy, almost unreal quality to it. You know, you can be wearing uh, Neptune's rose colored glasses and see that other person is so perfect and so wonderful. It doesn't mean it won't work. I don't want to sound, um, you know, like the shrew and all this, but, you know, you you're going to have to have a reality check at some point because especially conjunct Neptune, it's just it's so dreamy. And, you know, there's that un, unreal quality, you know, that Neptune brings. Neptune also rules motion pictures. So you get that idea of that whole, you know, unreality aspect. Um, but having, having said that, it is wonderful energy for creative downloads, for, you know, intuition, for everything that is, um, not necessarily, you know, perceivable on the um, physical plane, but that, you know, you just seem to pull out of thin air, so to speak. 
Jupiter is in your 11th house. Jupiter has um, spends a year in each sign. So um, has been doing that though in like two parts. So was in your 11th house back in May, began retrograding, went back into Pisces and came back into your 11th in December and will be there until mid-May. So, you know, do use this energy well because then Jupiter's beneficial energy will shift into your 12th house and won't come back for another 12 years. But Jupiter in your 11th, the 11th is everything to do with groups and organizations you belong to. So, you know, Jupiter, again, wants us to grow, wants us to expand, wants us to grow in terms of learning and knowledge and wisdom. And if those words sound familiar, it is because Jupiter is related to the ninth house as the ruling planet of Sagittarius. So, you know, again, Jupiter's wisdom within groups, um, Jupiter's beneficial energy within groups, Jupiter will have opportunities come to you and probably through people, um, you know, through groups of people. And you don't have to look very hard to find Jupiter's beneficial energy. You know, as much as you have to really, you know, scratch and dig with Saturn, Jupiter, things almost, you know, land in your lap. So do use that energy. You know, if people want to help you or if people are opening up opportunities for you or if there are opportunities to pursue and there are other people involved do definitely use that energy and remember it's just for a few more months because after that Jupiter is going to as I said change signs and change houses the 11th house is also a money house in that it relates to money from where we are successful so again if we're back to you know corporate success it can be a bonus it can be a raise it can be you being entrusted with uh, you know a more important client file you know maybe you're on commission or maybe it is success from another pursuit you have. So, you know, do know that as well. Jupiter's beneficial energy can bring you um, um, monetary success as, you know, the, the money house related to your house of success. I hope I'm clear with that. <laughs> and with, of course, Venus moving into there, you know, this is our really beautiful. In ancient astrology, Jupiter was the great benefic. Whoops, and I'm making him spin. And Venus was the lesser benefic. So there's a lot of nice energy for pursuing success and pursuing it profitably, I should say. And also, of course, with the cooperation of others, because we're talking 11th house of groups. And of course, Venus wants to, or Venus actually draws others to us in terms of cooperation. Finally, there is a full moon in your second house. This is your wealth and your finances. This is on the 6th. So, um, you know, the full moons always highlight something. And let me preface this by saying the moon is the ruling planet of Cancer. So the moon is at home in Cancer. The, a planet can be its most self at home. That is the good and the bad. So, you know, the moon can be almost a diva, a drama diva in Cancer, especially when she is full. And, you know, the moon, of course, is across from the sun. We're going back to the start of the month. So let me put the sun back here. Other people's wealth and money, remember, you know, Pluto is there talking about power and control, your wealth and finances. So, you know, there's an opposition here. Of course, the sun opposite the moon brings us the full moon. So, you know, maybe there's a realization here. Maybe something is coming to culmination here and does have a link with other people's finances. Um, you know, the moon is also a very feminine energy. So it relates to emotion, especially in cancer. Cancer is a very primal need for security and nurturing. Um, also being a feminine energy, maybe there is a female figure or a female energy that is going to come in and help you realize something in terms of this full moon or bring something to fruition or completion on this full moon. But do not get over emotional and triggered. Full moon in Cancer, you know, potential for diva meltdown <laughs> type of thing. Leave yourself a few days on each side, especially as, as it, concern, it is concerned with uh, finances. And then, you know, just approach it more rationally. But there is the possibility of you will realize something or something will come uh, to culmination in that aspect. And also, guys, do watch my video for the first three months of 2023, the general astrology. Um, you know, one of the things also after Mars is finished in your sign, Gemini, it will move into your second house of finances. And that will be in on March 25th of 2023 so just you know maybe two more months two and a half months of mars in your first house in your sign do use this well and wisely and then mars will bring that drive to second house matters 
So Gemini, that is everything I wanted to tell you. Don't forget to like if you liked, subscribe, leave a comment. I read all your comments and thank you so much for your likes and your subscribes. I will see you in the next video, Gemini. Love you. Bye.